Hi guys. As Tweety Pie would say, I told I told her pudding tat. I did, I did, I did. Yes, mm. except I can't get my voice up as high as Tweety Pie. So, <laughs> you must be sick to death and tired of seeing these images in the snow. But when I used this image to demonstrate the crop tool the other day, um, I Gil, one of my viewers and Patreons, um, he was a bit bit peeved that it was such a short video and I didn't actually show you any processing of the image. Right, okay. So, what we're going to do is process this image. I'm going to process it in raw therapy and I'm going to retouch it very, very quickly inside of Photoshop. Yes, I am. Um, so, let's get on with the job. First things first, this is the finalised image as it would go to Photoshop. So we're just going to go and take it all the way back to uh, normal. So I'm going to go to my profiles, mybase.pp3, and that'll get rid of everything. And of course, now it's lying on its side. So first thing we do is we've got to turn it 90 degrees anti-clockwise. And there it is. Okay, so... The first adjustment I'm going to make, well, both adjustments that I'm going to make, main adjustments in this uh, video, uh, are something of, um, I'm not going to say sledgehammers, but mm, it, it's hammer time. Yes, it is. And I want to show you how quickly and easily you can get your images looking halfway decent uh, without going through complicated multi-step um, processes such as lab curves etc I just want to try and keep things really simple so here comes hammer blow number one we are going to go over to the raw tab and we are going to come to raw white points right now then do this on your images with a little bit of caution okay but all I'm going to do is take the value from one to two. But ah, oh yeah. So what we've done is we've remapped the brightest tones in the image to be more white. Uh, but of course, all the other tones, including the darks, have followed suit. So if you do this and you use this white point correction slider, you've got to be careful that you're not putting a boatload of noise into your darker areas, which ostensibly we're not. Okay, so that was quick, low down, dirty adjustment number one, hammer blow number one, you might say, got about as much finesse as uh, a gorilla, but uh, it works, yeah, and it's not detrimental, detrimental to the image alrighty so now we're going to white balance the image so I'm going to just come over to the color tab and I'm just going to click on pick and that brings up our color picking you can see it's in a 32 by 32 square 32 by 32 pixel now we've got a dark gray up here and if we click there, it sort of makes the image go very, very warm in the mid-tones and in the highlights. Um, if we come into a lighter grey, such as the snow, then it will make the image go blue. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come over here into a sort of middle grey. And there we go. So we've hit sort of a happy medium. All righty. Now, once you've got your colour picker up and you're finished with it, yeah, roll your white balance colour picker up and you finish with it. Just right click with the mouse and right click with the mouse again. And job sorted. Alrighty. Now what we're going to do. We could actually engage soft light. Alrighty. So let's just turn soft light on. That puts quite a bit of contrast back into the image and it adds a lot of definition to the Lynx's face but of course it's a, it, it's a it's a global adjustment and I don't really want to do it as a global adjustment so because I'm inside a development build of raw therapy I can go and turn on local adjustments 
and I'm going to activate local adjustment. I'm going to add a spot. I'm going to go show additional settings. I do wish that was checked by default. And I'm going to make the spot quite a bit bigger. Now, this round circle here is the spot. All right, I've done one or two videos on local adjustments in the past, but just to refresh your memory, this is wherever I put this spot, and I'll, I'll place it because I'm going to put it sort of over here. I might even make it a little bit bigger. And the reason I'm, I'm getting its size up is I want to encompass as many tones under this spot as I can. And fundamentally, any adjustment I make by adding a tool to this spot uses what's inside this circle as a reference and then fades the effect out to the delimiters, which are these four points here joined by this ellipse. All right. Now, you've seen me use this as a, uh, as a normal spot. You've also seen me use it as a full image spot. I'm going to keep it as a normal spot. And I'm just going to stretch out the delimiters rather like that. And I'm being careful not to include any of the grey background, okay? Because all I'm wanting to do is to throw a little bit of emphasis onto the nearer part of the lynx's face just to bring it forward just a little bit add a little bit more definition to it and to do that first off the actual spot itself and the delimiters are very visually intrusive so you can't really see what you're doing hence we've got this show hide button here so i'm going to click it once to hide it now i've not turned the spot off it's still there you just can't see the spot and you can't see the delimiters and we're going to go to add tool to current spot and we are going to go to oh something i don't really like which is tone mapping and um, tone mapping was the sort of photomatics HDR grungy look, all right. And uh, tone mapping in raw therapy isn't quite so bad as that, as long as you keep it under control. All right, so I'm going to engage tone mapping. And did you see the lynx's head pop? Right, that didn't quite sound right, did it? But if I turn it off, I mean, it looks pretty good as it is, but now if I turn it on. You can just see we've thrown a little bit more contrast in there. And it's just sort of brought the face to life. And just popped it slightly forward towards the camera. All right, now then. <laughs> There's two real major controls in here. Which, first off, is this checkbox. Which is normalize luminance. And you can see the tooltip there. Reconstruct luminance so that the mean and variance of the output are identical to those of the original. Mm. Sounds confusing. Let's just turn it off by unchecking it. Whoa! Yeah, wow. So fundamentally, <laughs> that normalized luminance sort of keeps the remapping under control by. Hmm, well, I'm not too sure, not really, but it, it's a bit of a strong, it, it's a bit strong with the normalised luminance turned off. And really and truly, I suppose with it checked, it, it, it's looking at the tones in the original image and then sort of letting the algorithm do its thing um, with a bit of restriction. Um, unrestricted, that's what it looks like. Mm, yes. Let's just take it up in magnification um, to 50%, that'll do, because we, we've got to ascertain, have we done it too much? I think we have. It's a little bit over the top, but it, it's a little bit more appealing than that, which is definitely more appealing than as it was before. So, what we're going to do is we're going to uncheck Normalize Luminance. Now, 
this slider here, edge stopping. So this slider affects edge sensitivity. The greater the value, the more likely a change in contrast will be interpreted as an edge. And if we set to zero, it will have the effect of sort of unsharp masking. So it is a bit of a, well, <laughs> a bit of a hammer. Yeah, you can see what we're doing here. As we turn it up, we get an even more contrast increase. And this this is just way over the top. This is way darker and way more contrasty than the rest of the image. So I think we'll just sort of back that off a little bit. And um, then for the overall strength, I'm going to drop that to somewhere below 50. And we will now turn the thing off and turn it back on again. And I'm sure you'll agree that that really does do the job of lifting the detail in the face, adding a little bit more, dare I use the word clarity, adding a bit, of more, a bit more localized contrast and just popping that face forward towards the viewer, towards the camera, if you like, and making the face look a lot less flat. Uh, so fundamentally, we've got local contrast in a localized area to work in our favor. All righty. So what else do we need to do? I'm just going to zoom into the face uh, because it's um, shot in snow. And, you know, I mean, it's got little flecks of snow all over it. Um, and we do get the odd specular highlight, such as over here. I find these quite annoying. Catch lights in the eye. Not a lot you can do about those. In point of fact, they actually, they're actually good for the image. And I'm never really bothered about catch lights in eyes being blown. But these little white flecks, the same as black flecks in noisy areas. It's impulse noise. So we're going to come over to the details tab. And we're just going to activate impulse noise reduction. And you watch these white flecks will disappear. Uh, well, they will for the most part. And there we go. So we've got rid of uh, as many of those as we really want to. Can we take it up just a little bit more? Mm, yes. Just back it up a little bit, sort of 58. And that will just about do. How noisy is the image? Let's have a look at these darks up here. Um, I'm not bothered about this level of noise here. I'm just not. So, yeah, fundamentally, it was exposed at ISO 640, uh, plus one stop EV, exposure compensation, on the old 1DX, not a 1DX Mark II or 1DX Mark III, but the original 1DX. Um, so, you know, I mean, I'm quite happy with that. So all we've got left to do now is to come out to a sort of fit to screen view, rather like that. And then, of course, we're going to have to crop it. So we're going to activate the crop tool and we can see we've got our double headed arrow there at the top. So we're just going to come over to that corner and I'm going to, well, I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll just leave that there for a moment and we'll, instead of having it on frame, we'll have it on rule of thirds. Yes, we will. And so we'll come back into this corner again and I'm just going to drop that crop to the point where the rule of thirds line is passing through the irises of his eye. And the other thing I'm going to do is just hold down the shift key and click. And you can see that I can now move the actual crop. And I'm going to center that crop on that pupil of um, the Lynx's left eye, which is the right hand side, on the right-hand side of the image. Okay, so there we go. We are now ready to rock and roll. Um, we've done the basic adjustments to make the image look really cool. I'm just going to... Hit the old artist palette for the instant export over to Photoshop. And then I'm just going to take out that annoying highlight there. See, that was nice and quick, wasn't it, in Photoshop. That specular there. 
and that little bit of snow that uh, the lynx's foot is kicking up. Um, so all we're going to do is just go into the image at uh, God knows what percent and we've already got the spot healing tool uh, selected and we're just going to paint over there that'll do for that zoom out you see we've got all these flecks of snow being kicked up by his out of focus foot they don't particularly bother me but that one really does so we're just going to just pass the uh, spot healing tool over there and that will do yeah it will and there we go so that is my processing of this image don't forget if you're uh, a member over on my patreon um, members site you can actually gain access to this very raw file um uh, yeah so there you are um, you can work along with Andy. Yes, you can. All right, guys and gals, if you like that video, don't forget, give it a like, give it a, a nice comment below, give it a thumbs up, share it. Yes, that'd be nice. And uh, there you go. So until the next time, guys and gals, stay safe, stay well, keep taking the pictures, and I'll speak to you very soon. Toodaloo.